Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be learning more about the pagination feature and the client API provided by the blog plugin. Alright, so we're going to take a look at the pagination post and let me just zoom in right here. Alright, so this is what we're going to be doing. So like I mentioned, now it's time to learn more about the pagination feature and the client API provided by the ViewPress blog plugin. So in this tutorial, we're going to begin the configuration of the pagination property, as well as discuss the globally scoped pagination variable provided by the client API. Now you wanna make sure that you start the local development server, it should be running at localhost port 8080 to see the changes we'll be making to the site. And if the changes aren't appearing after you save them, then try restarting your local development server. Now you can also view all the code in this tutorial by going to the tutorial 16 branch of the CodeMonkey's blog tutorials repository. So you can come right here and you can get all of the code that we'll be using in this tutorial. And then over here, I have the development server running right here at localhost port 8080. And I have it running over here in this terminal. All right. So let's get on to the pagination configuration. So as mentioned in the previous tutorial, Pagination allows you to break up the display of your posts into multiple pages. So this provides easier navigation and a better user experience. So if you have any questions or you want to learn more about the pagination configuration, then you can check out the pagination property and the pagination config documentation. So you can come right over here to this link, look at the pagination property, and to look at the pagination config, you can come right here to the documentation for that. All right. so. This is the pagination property. So we're going to begin the configuration by adding the pagination property, which allows you to customize the pagination of your posts. So the expected type is a pagination object. And then here's the updated config.js file. And we'll see how we're going to use this property to customize it with these, with these properties right over here. All right, so what we want to do is we want to add this right here to our config.js file. So over here, and let me just close out this terminal. So over here, I have the config.js file open. And what we wanna do is we wanna come down right here underneath this property, and we're gonna type pagination, and then we're just gonna give it an empty object to start with, I'll format the file, and then save it. All right, so now we've added the pagination property and then inside of this object right here we'll be setting all the customization for our pagination object. Alright so now let's look at the length per page. So next we'll add the length per page property which sets the maximum number of posts to display per page. So the expected type is a number and the default value is 10. So when the number of posts is greater than the length per page value the blog plugin will generate the necessary pages to display all of the posts. All right, so the blog plugin does this by adding the, this right here. So it adds page slash n slash onto the end of the entry page where n represents the number of the page. So the second page in the paginated list of pages would be page slash two. All right, so if you remember from the previous tutorial, the ViewPress tutorial 15 blog plugin, the entry page is set by the path property, which is given a value of post. So if you come over here, you can see right here we have this path property, which we gave a value of post to. And so this means in our case, the blog plugin will generate pages with the following format. So we have this post slash page slash n, where n once again represents the number of the page. And then we also created the following posts in the post directory in the previous tutorial. So we created this example page one, example page two, and example page three posts. So we have all of those posts and then we created those inside of our post directory right here. So these are the files right here that we created in the previous tutorial. And since we only have three posts and the default value for length per page is 10, the blog plugin won't generate any more pages. And you can test this by attempting to navigate to the following page. So if we come over here and if we attempt to navigate to this page right here, you can see that we don't have a page two right now um, because the default value is 10. 
right? So to demonstrate the generation of pages, we can set the length per page to have a value of two. And then here's the updated config.js file. So if we come down here, what we want to do is we want to add this property right here to our pagination property. So inside of this object, we're going to come down here and we're going to set the length per page. And then we're going to give that a value of two format the file and then we'll save it all right so now that we've added our length per page property we gave it that value of two if we come over here we should now be able to navigate to the following page so we can click on this link right here and now you can see that instead of getting that 404 we get this page all right so this would be page number two so this is our post slash page slash two and you go back to the first page, which would just be our entry page, which is posts. All right. And let me just close out of this local host and we'll just work with this one. All right. So updating the length per page. So in a future tutorial, we'll be updating the value of the length per page to be five, which is the current value being used by the blog. So if you came over here and if we went to the all posts on the blog, then you could see that we have one, two, three, or five posts per page here right and then you can see how we can navigate to the next one and it is five so this is our length per page in the blog currently is a value of five so in a future tutorial we'll be setting that um, now let me just go back to the view press pagination and we are on length per page all right so we've added that now we're going to talk about the layout property so now we're going to add the layout property, which is used to specify which layout component to use for the pagination pages, except for the entry page. So our pagination pages was like I just showed you in that all posts link. So that would be the pagination pages, the pages where we can paginate through the different, our different pages there. All right, and then the entry page uses the index post layout component, which we set in the previous tutorial. So if you come over here and we're on the post right here, you can see how this layout here, it's just this, you know, it's just the background color that we set and then it has the footer. Now if we come over here and if we go to our second pagination page right here, you can see how we also have this nav bar up here and then we have our footer down here and then just the, the background color that we set. So this, our second pagination page is currently using a different layout than our entry page. All right. So... Here for the layout property, the expected type is a string and the default value is this directory pagination or layout. So since we haven't created a directory pagination layout component in the layouts directory, the layout property uses the other default value, which is the layout component. And in our case, the layout component is provided by the default theme. So this right here is using the layout component that's provided by the default theme. All right, and this is our and let me just open up a terminal over here. And if we log out here, and if we go to the docs, and then we're gonna go to the list out in here, and we'll go to our dot view press, and then inside of here, we list out inside of here, you can see our theme directory, and we'll list out inside of there, and then we'll go into our layouts directory right here, and I'll clear that, and then we'll just list out everything in there. So right here you can see these are our layouts currently. So we have our global layout that we created in a previous tutorial. We have our index post layout that we created in the last tutorial. And then we have our post layout that we also created in the last tutorial. All right, so those are the layout components that we currently have in our project, as well as that layout component provided by the default theme. So. Now, to see the differences between the layout of the entry page and the layout of the second page, we can navigate to these pages like we just did. So we saw over here that this the second page uses the layout component provided by the default theme. And then if we go back over here, this is using the on the entry page, which is just this post right here. This is using the index post file that we set up in the previous tutorial. So it's using that index post layout component that we set up in the previous tutorial. 
All right, so if you want your pagination pages, except for the entry page, to use a layout specifically designed for them, so if you wanted your entry page to use a different layout than the second pagination page, third pagination page, etc., then you can create a directory pagination.view file inside of the layouts directory. Since directory pagination is the default value for the layout property, you won't need to explicitly set it in the config.js file. So if you wanted that to be the case, then you could come over here and then you could touch and then you could create that directory pagination.view file right here inside of your layouts directory. And then it would default to using this layout component instead of using the layout component that in our case is provided by that default theme. All right. So now for us, we'll be using the same layout for the entry page and for the other pagination pages. So we're going to provide a custom value of index post to the layout property. And then here's the updated config.js file. So if we come down here, we could see that we're going to add this layout property. And let me just close out this terminal. And I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to say layout. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the index post right here. And I'll format that file, save it. And now we're using the index post layout component for our pagination pages. All right. So when navigating to the following page, you should now see the index post layout component being used instead of the layout component. So if we come back over here right now, we are on the entry page and that's using the index post layout component. And then if we go to our second pagination page, now that's also using the index post layout component. So you can see we no longer have that nav bar up there and we just have the footer and it looks exactly like the entry page at our post right there. All right, so here's a table that summarizes the relationship between the pagination and post page URLs, the blog plugin builds and the layout components. So we have our entry page at post right here. And that uses the index post and that falls back to the using that layout component. And then we have our second pagination page at our post slash page slash two right here. And that in our case is going to use that index post layout component that we just set. And it falls back to using a directory pagination layout component. And if that's not there, then it'll fall back to using the layout component, which we saw when we first set it up. And then we also have our URLs right here for our example page one, example page two, and example page three, and they all use the post layout component, which we set up in the previous tutorial. So here's a quick reminder about that. So the post pages were given the URLs above by building customized permalinks using the format specified by the item permalink property. So if you come over here, you can see this is the format that was used by the item permalink property right here, this year, month, day, and then the slug right there. And the layout components used by the post pages were set by the item layout property, which is right here, which is that post right there. So both of these properties can be found in the config.js file, like we just saw over here. And you can refer to the previous tutorial, the ViewPress Tutorial 15 blog plugin, if you have any questions about the post pages. All right. So now let's talk about the previous text property right here. So now we'll add the prev text property, which is used to specify the text for the previous links. So the previous links are used to navigate to the previous page in the list of pagination pages. So if we come over here and let's just go down to the bottom and this would be the next text right there. But if we go to the second page here, you, then you can see that right here we have this value for the, the text right here to navigate to the previous page. So that's what this property sets. So we just gave it this value right here of prev for the prev text property. All right, so let's go back to the post, back to the prev text property right here. So the expected type is a string and the default value is prev. And we'll be using the default value of prev for the prev text property. So we don't need to explicitly set the property. However, we're going to explicitly set it because this gives us a quick reference to the property and its value. And now it's also possible to use a custom value for the prev text property. For example, you could use a value of older which you would have to explicitly set in the config.js file. All right, so here's the config.js file, the updated one after we add the prev text property. So we're gonna come over here. And what we're gonna do is we are going to come down here, at type in prev text, and then we're just gonna give it this value of 
reprieve and then we will let me just fix this real quick and then we will format the file save it and now we have our brief text property set all right so now let's talk about the next text property so we're now ready to add the next text property which is used to specify the text for the next links and the next links are used to navigate to the next page in the list of pagination pages so the expected type is a string and the default value is next so like we just saw if we came over here to all posts then you could see here is the next text property being used with this value of next right here so this just lets us navigate through our list of pagination pages right there all right so we'll go back to the blog post back to the next text property so we'll be using the default value of next for the next text property so we don't need to explicitly set the property however we're going to explicitly set it because this once again gives us a quick reference to the property and its value and it's also possible to use a custom value for the next text property for example you could use a value of newer which you would have to ex explicitly set in the config.js file all right so here's the updated config.js file and we're just going to add our next text property and give it that value of next so if we come over here we're going to type in next text and then we're just going to give it the value of next then we will format and save that file all right so now we've set the the configuration for the pagination right here we have our length per page set to two we're using that layout of index post and then we have our brief text property of brief and the next text property of next all right so we're now going to take a look at how to use the client api to access the pagination data in the layout components used by the blog plugin all right so the client api uses globally scoped variables which means you can access these variables from any component as well as in markdown files when using view and you could check out the using view and markdown documentation if you're interested in how you can access these variables inside of your markdown file so you can come over here and take a look at this documentation all right so the client api provides the following globally scoped variables so it provides this pagination variable a front matter key and this service right here and we'll be focusing on the pagination variable in this tutorial now, if you have any questions or you want to learn more about the client API, then you can check out the client API documentation right here. So this has the pagination right there, it has the front matter key and the service right there. So that's the documentation for the client API. All right, so we're going to be taking a look at the pagination variable. So we're going to discuss each property the pagination variable exposes, as well as demonstrate how to access the properties in the layout components. Now to get a better understanding of the pagination data, we're going to log each property to the console and the logging will be added to the created lifecycle hook in the script tag. And to view the data in the console, we're going to inspect the browser, then go to the console tab. Now, if you have any questions about the created lifecycle hook, then you can check out these resources right here. So this is the documentation for the created lifecycle hook for view two. And then we have an introduction to view lifecycle hooks right here. So you can check out this post right here on lifecycle hooks used in view. And you can take a look at the created hook. All right. So now a little warning down here is this null pagination. So if you access the pagination variable at a route which doesn't match any classification, so i.e. the route isn't a pagination page, then the value of the pagination will be null. This means when developing layout components, you should check if the pagination variable has a value of null before using the variable all right so basically what we're saying here is that on this page we're going to have a pagination variable because this is a pagination page and same thing with our entry page right here of post it's also going to have a pagination variable it won't be null but if we went to the home page it would be null here since this isn't a pagination page all right so let's go back to the entry page now all right, so now let's talk about pages. So the pagination.pages property is an array of objects where each object contains data related to post pages that are accessible on the current pagination page. All right, so since the pagination.pages property contains data related to post pages that are accessible on the current pagination page, the data of pagination.pages will be different depending on which pagination page is being viewed. All right, so to make that clearer, if we go here on the blog to all posts right here, so this is our this is a pagination page, 
and then each one of these is a a post in our pagination pages right so we have our pagination post right here we have this blog plug and post so inside of that pages object it's going to have data for this pagination post right here this blog plug and post right here and then the rest of these posts right here and then once we go to the second pagination page the pages object inside of here is now going to have data about this post this sticky footer post and then the rest of these pages right here so you can see as you paginate through the data that's within that pagination.pages property, that's going to be different depending on which pagination page you're currently on. All right, so let's go back to the pagination post and back to the pages property. All right, so to see the differences between the data, we're going to look at the entry page and the second page, which in our case is also the last page. So here are the links to both the entry page and the second page. And over here, we are already on the entry page. Now let's add the code to log the pagination.pages property in the layout component, which in our case is being used by both the entry page and the second page, i.e. that index post.view file. So both our entry page and our second page here, they're both going to be using the index post.view file. So this is what we want to set right here. So if we come over here, what we want to do is we want to open up our index post.view file. So go to index post dot view. And what we're going to do is we are going to just get out of that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to export default. And then we are going to use our created lifecycle hook right here. And then what we want to do is we want to type out this console dot log. And let me just copy this right here. We don't have any typos. All right. And now let me just format the file and save it. All right. So quick note down here is that if you're using different layout components, let me just make this bigger right here. So quick note is that if you're using different layout components, so you're using different layout components for your entry page and the other pagination pages, then you'll need to add the logging of the pagination.pages property to both of the files. So if for your other pagination pages, if you were using that directory pagination post, or the, so if you come up here to the layout, if you're using that directory pagination layout component, or this layout component, then you'd have to add this logging to those files to see it. All right, so let's go back to the pages right here. All right, so you can see right here that we just added our created lifecycle hook and now we're logging the pagination.pages property right there. All right, so after, let me go up here, right up here. So after adding the above code to the index post.view file and navigating to the entry page, the console should log an array of page objects with the following data. All right, so this is the pagination.pages property for the entry page. So if we come over here and if we inspect and then we go to the console, what we should see is our pagination.pages right here, which is an array. So here is what we've logged out right here. So we have all of these properties inside of here and we have are two values right there. So this is what you should be logging out for the entry page, which is for that post um, URL right there. All right, so this is just that, all of that data right there. And since the length per page property was given a value of two, and we have three post pages, so our example page one, example page two, and example page three, the pagination.pages property for the entry page is going to contain two page objects, one for each post. All right, so we come over here. You can see that we have this page object right here, and then we have this page object right here. And then you can see that it's, for example, page one, and then we have one, for example, page two. All right. So, and then a quick note down here on the formatting differences. So the log in the console tab is going to be formatted differently than the pagination.pages data shown here which was formatted using JSON. So the properties and the values will be the same though. So the format's gonna be a little bit different here because this is using 
JSON, and then this is just it logged out in the console, but all of the these properties inside of here and the values are going to be the same. All right. So now after navigating to the second page, the console should log an array consisting of one page object with the following data. So if we come over here and if we go to our second page, we go to our page two right here, then we have our pagination.pages right here. And then you can see here is all of the properties and all of the data. So right down here, you can see that we have just one page right here. And this is, for example, page three. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to describe what each property in the pagination.pages data represents. So we have the front matter right here. And this contains the data present in the front matter of the post pages. So if you come up here, you can see that this is the front matter being used by the post page. So it has the layout component that's being used by the post page, which is that post layout component that we set in the config.js file. And then it has this permalink property, which is using the item permalink property that we set in the config.js file. And that is the front matter that's being used on all of the post pages. And then we also have, so like I said, up there we have our layout. So this layout component is used by the post pages, which is set using that item layout property in the config.js file. And we have that permalink. So the permalink format, this is the permalink format used for the post pages, which is set using that item permalink property in the config.js file. And then we have this ID right here. So let me just open up the config.js file over here. So this is the ID property right here. So the ID right here is the unique ID for the current classifier, which is set using the ID property in the config.js file. So that's this value right there. And that has a value of posts for our, our post page. And then we have key. So this is a unique key generated for each page in the site. So this is just a unique key that's generated for each page in the ViewPress site. And then we have a path. So this is the path for the post page, which uses a customized permalink built from the format specified by the item permalink property, which is also found in the config.js file. So this is the path to the post page. So right here. So it's built using this item permalink right here. And then this is the path to the page. So right here, this would be for the example page three. So you can navigate to this path that's created by the blog plugin. So this is the path for this page right here for that example page three post. And then we have this PID. So this represents the, the PID for the current classifier, which is set using the ID property in the config.js file. So that's also set by this ID property. And then we have the regular path. So right up here, this regular path, which for the example page three is right here. So the regular path, so the default, this is the default path for the post for the post page, which is built using the regular template variable, which we discussed in the previous tutorial. So for the regular path, you could also navigate to the page by going to this, this path right here. And then we just have the relative path. So this is the location of the post page markdown file relative to the documents directory, which in our case is the docs directory. So this would be the path to the markdown file in our project right here. So it's just inside of that post directory. And then here is the markdown file. So the name of the markdown file for the example page three right there. All right, so that is just an overview of all of the of the page object or that the page objects found on our pagination pages. Now, the page variable right here. So the page object, the page objects in the pagination.pages property are the same page objects found by logging the globally scoped page variable in the post layout component. So after writing the code to log the page variable, which you could do by adding that created lifecycle hook inside of the post layout component, and then adding that console.log, and then you can log out this page variable, similar to how we logged out the pages variable inside of our index post layout component. And then you can view the log by navigating to the post page. So for example, you could navigate to this example page one if you wanted to see the page variable. So those page variables 
that you would find on example page one, example page two, and example page three. Those are going to match the page objects that you find inside of this pagination.pages property. And to learn more about the page variable and other globally scoped variables, you can take a look at the global computed documentation. So you can come over here to learn more about the page variable and these other globally scoped um, variables provided by UPress. All right. So now let's talk about the length. So the pagination.length property is a number whose value is determined by the number of pagination pages. So we're going to add the code to log the pagination.length property in the index post.view file. And I'm just going to copy this code right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up the index post.view file. So right here, and I'm just going to add this right here. And then we'll format the file and then we'll save it. All right, so this is the length right here. So we're just logging out the, the pagination.length property right there. So what we're gonna do here is if we, so if we navigate to either the entry page or the second page, the console should log a value of two, since in our case, there are a total of two pagination pages. So if we come over here and you can see, let's just go back to the entry page first. And then you can see that our pagination.length is two since we have two pagination pages. And if we go to the second page, so let's go to the second page, then you can see that that also logs out a two for the length since we have two pagination pages. All right. Now we have the has prev property. So the pagination.hasPrev property is a Boolean which has a value of true when a previous pagination page exists and a value of false when a previous pagination page doesn't exist. So let's add the code to log the pagination.hasPrev property in the index post.view file. So what we'll do is we'll copy this and then we'll come down here and then we'll paste that and we'll format the file and then we'll save it. So what we have here is we're just logging out the pagination.hasPrev property right there. So if we come back over here, so if we navigate to the entry page, the console should log a value of false. And this makes sense since the entry page is the first pagination page, which means there is no previous pagination page. So if we come over here and let's go back to the entry page at post, and then you can see that our pagination.hasPrev property that has a value of false because there's no previous pagination page to the entry page. And if we come over here to the second page, you can see that it has a value of true because the previous page is the first page, which is also the entry page at post. All right, so that's the has prev property. All right, so like I said, if we navigate to the second page, the console should log a value of true, which again makes sense since the entry page is before the second page. Now let's talk about the prev link property. So the pagination.prev link property is a string whose value is the previous pagination path if a previous pagination page exists and a value of null when a previous pagination page doesn't exist. All right, so we're going to add this code right here to log out that value to see it in the site. So let's add that and then we'll format the file and then we'll save it. And right here, we're just logging out this pagination.prev link right here. So we're just logging this value out right there. We just space this out a little bit. All right, so right here, we're just logging out the prev link. So let's go here. We're just going to open this up again. And if we navigate to the entry page, the console should log a value of, that's for the next one. So let's go back up to prev link. So if we navigate to the entry page, the console should log a value of null. And this makes sense since the entry page is the first pagination page, which means there is no link to a previous pagination page. So if we come over here and if we go back to the first page right here, you can see that for pagination.prev link, we get a value of null. And then if we navigate to the second page, the console should log a value of posts, which makes sense since the previous link before the second page is the entry page, which has that path of posts. So if we come over here, if we go to our second page, then you can see that our pagination.prev link has that value of post right there. All right, so now let's talk about the has next property. So the pagination.has next property is a Boolean, which is a value of true when a pagination page exists 
after the current pagination page and a value of false when a pagination page doesn't exist after the current pagination page. All right, so let's add the code to log the pagination.hasNext property in the index post.view file. So I'm just going to copy this code right here. And let's go over here and we're going to paste in this right here and we will format the file and then we will save it. All right. So right here, we're just logging the pagination.hasNext property. And if we come back over here, so if we navigate to the entry page, the console should log a value of true. And this makes sense since there is a next page in the paginated list of pages, i.e. the second page. So if we come over here, we go back to our entry page at the post path, then we have this pagination.hasNext property right here which has a value of true because we have that second page as the next page. Now, if we navigate to the second page, the console should log a value of false, which makes sense in our case, since there is no pagination page after the second page. So if we were to come over here, and then if we go to the second page, then you can see that pagination dot has next has a value of false, which makes sense because we don't have another pagination page. So if we went to page three, for example, we would get a 404 because we don't have a third pagination page. We don't have enough posts to make a third pagination page based off of our length per page property that we set with that value of two. All right. So we'll go back to our second page right here. And now let's talk about the next link property. So the pagination dot next link property is a string whose value is the path of the next pagination page. If it exists any value of null when the next pagination page doesn't exist. All right. So we're going to add this code right here to log out the value. So we're going to add this to the index post.view file. And if we come over here and we're just going to paste this in format and then save. And right here, we're just logging out the pagination.next link property right here inside of our index post.view file. Now, if we navigate to the entry page, the console should log a value of this post page two. And this makes sense since the entry page is the first pagination page. And in our case, there is a link to the next pagination page, i.e. the second page. So if we come over here, if we navigate back to our entry page, then what we're gonna see is for the pagination.next link property, we have the slash post slash page slash two. So that's the, this would be the link to the next pagination page in our list of paginated pages, which would be the second page right here. All right, so now if we navigate to the second page, the console should log a value of null. And this makes sense since in our case, the second page is the last page in the list of pagination pages, which means there is no link to the next pagination page. So if we come over here and if we go to page two, we're going to get a value of null for the pagination.next link property, because again, we don't have a third page in our paginated list of pages. All right. Now let's talk about the get specific page link property. So the pagination.get specific page link this is a method that accepts a page number and returns the path of a pagination page. So the page numbers start at zero. So to get the entry page path, you need to provide a value of zero. And then if an input is provided that is unable to return a path to a pagination page, then an error is thrown, which can be found in the console tab. All right, so let's add the code to log the output of the pagination.get specific page link method in the index post.view file. So I'm just going to copy this code right here. And then we're just going to add this to our index post.view file and format. We will format that and then we will save the file. And right here, we're just logging out the get specific page link and we're giving it we're giving it an input of zero. So this will log out the path for the entry page. All right, so, all right, so since we used a page number of zero in the code above, the console should log a value of post. And this makes sense since a value of zero refers to the entry page, which has a path of post. So if we come over here and we'll just start on the entry page right here, and you can see that for pagination.get specific page link with that input of zero, we get that value of post. So this is the path for the entry page. And this value is going to be the same even if we go to the second page right here because we're just giving it that input of zero 
which is the path for the entry page for all of the pagination pages. It'll give you that value right there. All right, so, and then if we want to get the path of the second page, then we can use a value of one as the page number. So the console should log a value of post page two. And this makes sense. It's a value of one refers to the second page, which has that path of post page two. All right, so if we change this to be a one right here, so if we change that to be a one, and then if we save the file, and then if we came back over here, and let's navigate back to the entry page to start with. And you can see right here that for pagination.get specific page link for that input of one, that gives us the post page two path right there. And then if we go to the second page, so page two right here, that's also going to give us the post page two when we use that get specific method or get specific page link method with an input of one. All right, so that's the path for the second page in our paginated list of pages. All right, so in this video, we looked at the pagination configuration. All right, so we looked at the pagination property. We added that to the config.js file. We looked at our length per page property. And then we looked at the layout property, the prev text property, and then we took a look at the next text property. All right, so that was for the pagination configuration. And then we took a look at the client API. So we specifically looked at the globally scoped pagination variable. And we looked at the pages property, the length property for that, the has prev property, the prev link property, the has next property, and the next link property. And then we took a look at the get specific page link method. So all of these properties and methods are provided by the blog plugin on that globally scoped pagination variable. All right. So in the next tutorial, we'll begin the development of the index post layout component, which will involve using the pagination variable provided by the client API. So we're going to begin the development of the index post.view file. So instead of the page just looking like this, just looking like, you know, just this empty page with just the footer up there, up at the top, we're going to begin developing this page. So it's going to start to look more like this page right here, which has our list of posts on it and it has our next link right down here which is using that that next text property and then the prev link right here with the prev text property and all of our list of pages our post pages right here on our different pagination pages all right so this we're going to start designing this in the next tutorial all right so we will see you in the next video.